This presentation examines linear regression. We are looking for the line of best fit. So we have a set of paired data, and we construct a scatter plot using that paired data. And then our goal is to find the line of best fit, that is the line that best represents those points. Now that line could go through many points, it could go through a few points, or it could go through no points. So here's some example. We have x values here, y values here, here are all of our points, and from this perspective it looks like that line doesn't really go through any of the points. We would expect the correlation here would be fairly close to 1. The points are tightly packed along that regression equation. Here's another example. This time the correlation will be negative, maybe close to negative 1. These values are all fairly tightly packed, and that red line is the line of best fit or the regression equation. And here's a situation where the correlation may not be very high. It may be a small positive number. I have a point here and I have a point here, not very close at all to the regression equation. You could certainly argue this is an outlier. And again, the regression equation doesn't go through any of the points. But I would not have much confidence in this regression equation because the points are not packed closely to it. If the correlation is close to zero, then it is not typically reasonable to use a regression equation to make predictions. So here's one of our rules. The slope of the regression equation, the slope m, is going to equal r, the correlation coefficient, times the standard deviation of y, or the standard deviation of the dependent variable, divided by the standard deviation of x, the standard deviation of the independent variable. And to get the y-intercept, we have to recognize that the point x bar comma y bar is going to be on the regression line. So remember, x bar y bar is not in our data set, but constructing a point x bar y bar, that point must be on the regression line. So we're going to use the standard notation from basic algebra, y equals mx plus b. We're going to go ahead and plug x bar and y bar into that to solve for b. So making that substitution, we can actually can determine what the b value will be. So here's our y equals mx plus b. Substituting y bar in for y and substituting x bar in for x, we get y bar equals mx bar plus b. And then subtracting mx bar, we get y bar minus mx bar equals b. And this is typically the formula we'll use. But if we want to go back to the previous formula, the slope for the regression equation is simply r times s sub y over s sub x. And this gives you a somewhat more complicated but a complete formula that we can use to find the y-intercept of a regression equation. So we want to do an example. We want to find the regression equation for a set of test scores. And we want to use a regression equation to predict the final exam score for a student who scores 75 on the first test. So here are the test scores. Again, you'll notice high scores, 97 associated with high scores on the final, 96. Low scores on the first test, 60. Associated with low scores in the final, 53. We have a couple anomalies where we have a low score on the first test but a high score on the final. Well, what do we need to do? We need to get R, the correlation coefficient. We need to get S sub Y. We need to get S sub X. Here is a picture of the data. And here is a computer-drawn version of that regression equation that we're going to try to find. And you'll notice that these data points are fairly tightly packed into the regression equation, so we expect the correlation to be fairly high. So we have the data in Minitab, and we ask Minitab to tell us the correlation coefficient. The command is CORR, core C1, C2, and the number it gives us is 0.758. So the correlation coefficient for this set of data is 0.758. And we also ask Minitab to give us the descriptive statistics. So I'm just focusing here on the mean, standard deviation, and variance. The standard deviation for test 1, 12.99. The standard deviation for the final, 12.83. So 12.99 will be S sub X, and 12.83 will be S sub Y. So we have our correlation coefficient R. We have S sub X. We have S sub Y. So M, our slope is going to be R, correlation coefficient, times S sub Y divided by S sub X. Correlation coefficient is 0.758 times S sub Y, 12.83, divided 
divided by s sub x 12.99 or 0.749. So we have our slope is 0.749. We have our x bar. Our mean of the x's is 80.8. And our mean of the y's is 75.16. So you want to plug all of these values into y equals mx plus b. So y will be replaced with y bar, m will be replaced with m, x will be replaced with x bar, and then we're going to use all that to solve for b. So y bar is 75.16, as we see here, equals m, 0.749, which we see here, times x bar, times 80.8, .8, which we see here, plus b. So subtracting this product from both sides, we're going to say 75.16 minus 0.749 times 80.8 .8 will equal B, or 14.64 will equal B. So we're going to go ahead and use that to find our regression equation. We have our slope M, and we have our y-intercept B. And we're going to use that to make our line of best fit. The line of best fit will be y equals mx plus B. So replacing the m, 0.749, in for m, x plus b, 14.64 is in for b. Now, it's going to be reasonable for us to use this regression equation to make a predicted value for y because our correlation coefficient is relatively high. And the fact that the slope and the correlation were fairly close to each other, that happened indeed because our two standard deviations were fairly close to each other. So at this point, we want to use the regression equation to predict the final exam score for a student who scores 75 on the first test. So we're going to take our 75 and plug it into this equation in for x. x, of course, is our independent variable. y is our dependent variable. So we're going to need y equals 0.749 times 75 plus 14.64 to give us our predicted value on the final exam for a student who scores a 75 on the first test. So indeed, plugging 75 in for x, we get 0.749 times 75 plus 14.64. And our predicted value for y is 70.82. So we can use a regression equation to make predictions about the dependent variable by looking at the independent variable. And we can also check this on Minitab. We can say regress C2 on 1. C1 gives us our regression equation. 14.7, final equals 14.7, plus 0.748 times test 1. Of course, 0.748 is the slope of that regression line, and 14.7 is the y-intercept of that regression line. And that will conclude this presentation.